Today I'd like to talk briefly about de-embedding for serial data applications. Um, when I've, uh, I've preset this, we have a demo board here generating 6 gigabit data um, plugged into our 23 gigahertz uh, MSO 70,000 series oscilloscope. And I've extended the monitor onto an external monitor just to give us a little more real estate and to let the camera see it a little, a little easier. So you can see here we have our 3 gigahertz, 6 gigabit signal. And if you look at that, you're probably thinking that's a wee bit ropey looking. And the reason for that, I have deliberately sabotaged our cable. I have a SMA T piece hooked in at the end here um, with a little extension just to give us a little stub on our cable path so we're getting a nice reflection off that and if we look at the, the actual signal that's being seen by the scope that's it there okay so um, it's really not an entirely unrealistic scenario where someone has added a, a test point to your cable or your, your transmission line um, you know, a one inch trace stub could easily kill your data where your nice 3 gigahertz signal becomes yeah, random nonsense. So what have we done to uh, magically get something nice out of it? Let's get rid of that again. We have the DPO jet tools here that will let us do um, our eye analysis. We can get a, a pretty decent eye diagram off that. You can still see there's a bit of a kink in the bottom here. Um, though I know from experience that is actually coming off the demo board. So that is a real signal. Um, just to prove the point, I could see I could put on the real signal, but we'll come to that later. Um, I'll show you how we've managed to recover our, our signal. Okay, so a little bit of software on the, uh, the scope called Signal Correct, and we're using that with this pulse calibration source. So this little box is producing um, very fast edges. We have a, a 7 picosecond rising edge. Um, if you want to do the maths, that works out to about um, frequency content around 50 gigahertz. So more than enough to calibrate our cables for our 23 gig scope. And the way it works, we substitute the pulse source for our actual signal source. We measure that 7 picosecond rising edge and from what we receive on the scope we can figure out a reverse transfer function. It's kind of the simplistic view but I'll, I'll walk through the wizard and you can see how it works. So, first step is just showing you how to connect up our little pulse source so we've got, already got that pre-wired up where USB is connected so the oscilloscope can control it. Next step, tell it we want to do either two port or four port. So we could do dual four port differential measurements going into two channels on the scope. But just for simplicity, I'm going to go single ended, one channel. The process is virtually identical. Uh, so we'll step on through, single channel. Next thing is to calibrate our system. So basically we're going to assume that this box, these cables, produce a perfect output. For that to happen, we need to measure it, see what that is, or if we haven't added anything to it, we can assume the, cal the factory calibration data is good. Um, for the sake of our demo, I'll, I'll actually make the measurement. So we remove our signal source. Point to note, the, uh, the equipment is static sensitive, so we should have our little wrist strap on. Uh, 
and you know, we're working at high frequencies and want to torque the SMAs in a consistent fashion. So we're going to create new calibration data next. We've already, I've just connected it up here. So just press acquire. The instrument's now gone off. It's using fast acquire mode to capture 40,000 waveforms. And I'm basically looking for that 7 picosecond fast edge. Okay, so once it's done that, it's now got calibration data. We could save that calibration data for future use. So it's having to do this step again. Um, we'll just move on. So now we can measure our, our actual cables that we're, we're interested in. Check this out. Original cable back onto the scope. Again, torqued up for good measure. Now, one of the big advantages of this system over using, a, say, a VNA to measure the cable loss is we can do it with minimal disruption to our setup. If we were doing this for real, we'd want these cables all kind of nailed down or taped down. Um, or in a, a test fixture to minimize variation from kind of measurement to measurement. Uh, you can see here I can remove my cable from our, our duct, in this case the demo board, plug it on to our calibration source. So we're only playing here, but uh, you know, if we we're doing this for real, I could do that quite easily while minimizing any change to this cabling. Okay, we'll measure that. You can see the, the nasty step on our, our fast rise just due to the reflection from that little stub. Nasty overshoot ringing. And there is the frequency response of our, our cable. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera. Uh, but that is at the, the worst peak, that's about minus 27 dB. Uh, we've got nice multiple peaks. The, the general roll off is what probably about 5 dB or so up to um, 20 gigahertz, but there's these big nasty spikes. And I, the little stub I've added, I deliberately kind of tuned that to kind of multiples of 3 gigahertz. We've got 3, 6. We're basically killing our signal. Um, so, having measured the response of our cable, our next step will create a custom filter, which is essentially the um, reverse transfer function. So, create a filter. There's the response of our cable, there's the response of our filter, and the net result a nice flat response falling off at 23 gig, the uh, bandwidth we set our filter for. We now apply that to channel 1 maths. And we're done. So we just put the signal back on our, our duct. relatively clean and shapely eye. Uh, just to prove that it is doing something useful, if we re remove the stub and just do it with straight channel 1, no, no maths, we should see a signal very similar to what's on the screen at the moment. Ok, 
Okay, so there's our channel 1 waveform now without the stub. So we're getting a, a much better, well, the only thing we've got now is the loss of this cable, which should be fairly negligible. And you can see we still have that little kink on the lower edge. So if I run DPO jet on that. Just reinitializes in the, the full range of of measurements. Okay. And the one we're interested in. All right, I um, again very similar to, to what we were seeing with our nasty cabling de-embedded with the uh, old TCS box and uh, we're all good. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, hope you find that useful.